Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India number 27 so we have been discussing about uh, kepler's equation for hyperbola so already we did by one method so today uh, and the last in the last lecture we have started with uh, deriving with another method so the same method will continue and derive that and thereafter we will look into various terminologies we have used and various equations uh, used in these derivations So, if you remember that we have written equation for hyperbola as x square by a square minus y square by b square equal to 1 in Cartesian coordinates. And then we have stated that this is satisfied by a cos hyperbolic. and y equal to b sin hyperbolic yes. okay, so if we insert this so we get here uh, cos hyperbolic f minus sin hyperbolic f this equal to 1 which is true which is true Hence, x and y described by a cos hyperbolic f and b y equal to b sin hyperbolic f, they lie on the hyperbola. And where the hyperbola we have shown as, so this is the center of the hyperbola, not directrix. And this is the hyperbola is shown, this distance we have magnitude by, we have shown it to be a. And if we draw a asymptote for this, so this is the asymptote for this hyperbola. So on this side, if we, from here, from the perigee, if we raise a perpendicular line, so it cuts here in somewhere. So this is B, and this is A. Similarly, on the this side also, last in the last lecture, I have shown that figure. So again, I am not drawing that the whole thing. So this is the turn angle this is the asymptote and somewhere this is your focus and this is the asymptote line parallel to asymptote and this we have written as theta infinity and this angle we have shown by beta. So, from this place if you look magnitude wise this is tan beta equal to b by a. So, we will come to this particular figure again right now that is not required and thereafter using this we have started writing by equation for the conic section which is r equal to l by 1 plus e cos theta and remember that l can be written as 1 minus e a square okay. and here this can be represented or it can be written as L equal to A times C A square minus 1. In this case A is greater than 0, in this case A is less than 0 and we are stating it for hyperbola. Hyperbola for in basic definition for hyperbola A is taken as less than 0 for hyperbola. But if you write the equation in a particular way like this, so at that time you have to describe the semi major axis as uh, a greater than 0. So, then using this equation uh, we have written this as a times c a square minus 1 divided by 1 plus e cos theta and then we rearrange it. Okay. Also y equal to r sin theta okay. and y from here this is available. So, this is b 
sin hyperbolic f and this implies r equal to b sin theta or uh, let us write in the next step here. So, what we are going to do what are what we have done we have expressed sin hyperbolic in terms of theta angle or f in terms of theta angle. So, the same effort we are putting here. So, sin hyperbolic f this equal to y by b from this place we can see this is y by b equal to r sin theta divided by b and r is known from this place. So, a times e a square minus 1 divided by 1 plus e cos theta and sin theta as we put here in this place. So, till this extent uh, we have done this and b is missing here. So, b again which we have not proved for the hyperbola at b equal to a times e a square minus 1. Okay. This will be necessarily written in this way e a square minus 1 not 1 minus e a square. So, here we have to also write a times e a square minus 1 under root. Okay. So, this will get reduced to a cancels out and here we have e a square minus 1 under root sin theta divided by 1 plus e cos theta. So, this is sin hyperbolic equation we have got. Along the same line cos hyperbolic f this can be written as e plus cos theta divided by 1 plus e cos theta. So, this you can check yourself this is left as a as an exercise ok we have where we have used the fact that cos hyperbolic f square this equal to 1 plus sin hyperbolic square f. So, you can use this equation and you can get to this result ok. Thereafter uh, we wrote f equal to sin hyperbolic inverse and whatever we have written the terms here this this equation we have used it e a square minus 1 under root sin theta divided by 1 plus e cos theta and this can also be written as this. So, there is one a standard equation from text you will get this sin hyperbolic inverse x this can be written as this will prove later. For the time being we take it for granted that this is written like this. So, this implies that here x is e a square minus 1 under root sin theta divided by 1 plus e cos theta okay. and then we insert here in this equation. Okay. So, from there so, so, by inserting what we are getting here this is nothing but f f equal to sin hyperbolic inverse x. So, therefore, therefore we get f equal to ln and in bracket here the whole thing has to be copied e square minus 1 sin theta plus 1 e cos theta and then x square of course, here e a square minus 1 e a square minus 1 under root sin theta divided by 1 plus e cos theta 
this whole square and then plus 1 and square root of this whole thing. Now, this quantity can be expanded and this particularly this inside the square root sign this can be expanded and it can be written in a particular way. So, in that case you have x equal to x square plus 1 under root this gets reduced to if you expand it and you can check it few steps I am skipping here again because there is constant on time. Okay, so, the, the term under the square root sign is here and this term is copied here in this place. So, therefore, f equal to L e square minus 1 sin theta plus e cos theta divided by 1 plus e e cos theta plus e divided by 1 plus e cos theta. So, this is the equation we are getting. Now, this has to be simplified, okay. this needs to be simplified and for that we need to do certain substitution. So, we will use this substitution sin theta equal to 2 tan theta by 2 divided by 1 plus tan a square theta by 2 and cos theta equal to 1 minus tan a square theta by 2 1 plus tan a square theta by 2. So, th this step again you can carry out and uh, if you insert this, this will get reduced to ln Okay, so, it is uh, not difficult to derive this particular equation. Uh, now, we are going to the uh, equation we have got this uh, m h hyperbolic this equation we have written earlier as if you remember that by integrating this equation r square theta dot. So, we uh, rewrote it. and thereafter we rearranged it to write it as and integrated it and once we integrated it for hyperbola we got this equation. So, this we have written uh, that this is a standard integration uh, this is an integration found in some uh, standard textbook. Okay, so, this quantity this is cos theta minus e plus 1 under root tan theta by 2 this will be plus here and e plus 1 under root minus e minus 1 under root tan theta by 2. So, if you check now so, the quantity here written this is nothing but f. So, the this side becomes f. f and what this quantity is if you look here in this part. So, this part we have written earlier sin hyperbolic f and this is your this part. So, here we have e sin hyperbolic f minus f. So, we write here and this is nothing but your q 
Kepler's equation for hyperbola which we have also obtained using right in the beginning we have obtained using purely the mathematical method by differentiating okay. where we were given this r and we use the equation for h square okay and then we differentiated this r and we had the equation for h square so for combining these two we obtained this mh therefore we are getting the same equation by different methods and it also verifies that uh, whatever we are doing it's a correct okay so there are few more things that we need to uh, work out okay particularly we have few relationship that we should look into tan e by 2 this quantity will be e minus 1 plus 1 under root tan theta by 2 and the same way it can also be written as tan theta by 2 equal to e plus 1 Okay, so uh, we will uh, work on this also, but before that, we need to do few more exercise. Okay, now let us look into the properties of the hyperbola. We have to get these equations. Already we have drawn this uh, earlier. asymptote is here asymptote is the line to which say if we have an exponential function so you can see that e to the power minus x if i plot it y equal to e to the power minus x so it will converge like this so the x axis is let's say asymptote this is the asymptotic value means as x tends to infinity so you will see that y tends to 0 so this is an asymptote to which it this line becomes converges once r tends to infinity so already we have shown this to be this distance to be b this distance to be a and this angle as delta this part was remaining in our discussion so i am taking it up at this stage theta infinity this angle we write as beta so we can see that beta equal to 180 minus theta infinity because so this is parallel to this asymptote this is asymptote this is asymptote so this is parallel these two are parallel ok so we have b by a equal to tan beta equal to tan 180 minus theta infinity equal to minus tan theta infinity this we can write as minus sin theta infinity divided by cos theta infinity for hyperbola we 
we write r equal to 1 by or for the conic section e cos theta okay. in this equation as r tends to infinity so 1 plus e cos theta then can be written as theta infinity when r tends to infinity this theta is referring to that ok this is referring to this part so this becomes 0 and this implies cos theta infinity this equal to minus 1 by e so therefore sin theta infinity this becomes 1 minus cos square theta infinity under root or 1 minus 1 by e square b by a can be written as sin theta which is e square minus 1 under root divided by e and then cos theta infinity which is minus and this gets reduced to e square minus 1 under root b equal to a times e square minus 1 under root. So, you have to also note that b will be always written in terms of b equal to e square minus 1 under root. You cannot write it like this 1 minus e square under root. This is only in the case of ellipse and this part is for the hyperbola. For hyperbola we always write it like this. So, we have got the expression for b here. So, uh, these were few of the things which were left in the conic section and I told that we will cover while we discuss about the hyperbolic orbit. So, cos beta equal to cos under t t minus theta infinity equal to minus cos theta infinity Now, going back into this figure, this angle is beta because this is the these two lines are asymptotes. The, this is the right part of the hyperbola, and this is left part. And uh, distance from here to here, this is r perigee, and uh, from this place to this place, this is r apogee. So, cos beta is 1 by e and also we can see that 2 beta equal to or uh, we can write delta the turn angle is equal to 180 minus 2 beta delta by 2 equal to 90 minus beta. cos beta equal to 1 by e as derived above and therefore, delta by 2 this is sin inverse 1 by e or delta equal to 2 sin inverse 1 by e. So, th these are the expression for r perigee and r apogee. So, you can see the notice the difference in the apogee and perigee location in the ellipse. Here, this is the in the this case, this is perigee here as uh, shown by this red dot, while the apogee is shown by this blue dot here. 
so these are on the two sides of the center and center is lying here uh, which is shown by the yellow point center is lying in this point whose coordinate we have written as 0 0 so there is a difference between the ellipse and hyperbola and accordingly uh, some of the things change okay and also if you notice we have uh, shown that distance from the focus okay, to any point on the hyperbola say if we take point here on this and then we join the other focus so this is f then this is f star or we will show it by a small f and if we write this as p so here p f magnitude minus p f star magnitude will be equal to 2 a this is the basic result this is always constant so we will utilize this information So, in the case if we look here at this point, so this is r apogee and this point is r perigee on the blue dot I am putting a black dot and the red dot I am putting here a black dot. So, I hope it is a visible. So, uh, this is your apogee and this is perigee. So, if your p point coincides with this it becomes easier to work out. So, uh, let us look into this. So, at that time the r perigee and r apogee they are defined. So, 2a will write as r a minus r p. Uh, this is distance wise okay, in that case. So, we have here r a equal to l by 1 minus c, but here remember that e for the hyperbola is greater than 1 and therefore, we will put a minus sign because this l by 1 minus c e, this becomes a negative quantity and therefore, we put a minus sign here and this is already a positive quantity. So, we write it this way and if you rearrange it. So, l can be taken outside this is minus sign 1 minus c e plus 1 by So, this is the uh, semi lattice rectum but if you in this case then a is less than 0 but if you want to represent represent in terms of a greater than 0. So, the same thing you should write as here in this case this will be representing A greater than 0 and E also greater than 0. Here E is greater than 0. Therefore, this quantity this becomes negative tip uh, this part is little easier to handle because you can remember that 
latest rectum this will be given by a times c square minus 1 this is for hyperbola and for parabola you are using a times 1 minus e square this is for parabola so in the case of this parabolic equation if we want to change uh, uh, sorry this is for ellipse this is for ellipse and if we want to change it so we have written as uh, minus a e a square minus 1 so here we need to correct in this part otherwise it will be confusing so we will follow this scheme uh, here in this case this a is if we write it like this so a is less than 0 in this part if we write here in this way so a is greater than 0 this is the expression for hyperbola this is also the expression for hyperbola but here in this case a is less than 0 so this thing we have to uh, take care of while writing otherwise uh, it may be confusing so this by this part we have rearranged and this 2 2 cancels out and a equal to minus l by 1 minus c a square this implies l equal to minus a times 1 minus e square and once we rearrange so this l equal to a times 1 e square minus 1 so here in this case a is greater than 0 and also e is greater than 1 the format in which we are working we are writing here because this is the correction i have done because this should be consistent with this so uh, we have written in this particular format and because of this the result we got it here this way l equal to a times c a square minus 1 otherwise you follow a standard form which is the most standard one is this one okay, and based on this in the beginning we have derived the Kepler's equation also l equal to a times 1 minus c a square this is valid for ellipse and if it is an hyperbola so e will be greater than 1 so in that case you will shift the sign outside okay so therefore there is exchange of e a square and 1 so it gets into this form and minus sign comes outside so in this case we write a is less than 0 so uh, if we write a is less than 0 so this becomes hyperbola hyperbola and if we write a greater than 0 so here in this case if we write a greater than 0 so this case will be an ellipse so uh, this is the most standard form but many of the books they bring it to this form for their convenience maybe but uh, uh, if we go by um, our uh, basic uh, concept so uh, i will say that you follow this step and it will be the most convenient only thing that you have to keep care that b will be always defined in terms of a equal b equal to a times e a square minus 1 we never write it as b equal to a times 1 minus c a square this is not correct okay this is only for the case of ellipse this will be valid only for the case of ellipse and this is for hyperbola so this difference you have to notice Okay, so some of the basic things we have already covered and uh, expressions also we have already written now let us wind up this first r equal to l by 1 plus e cos theta we have used this, this earlier which we are writing as a times c a square minus 1 again this is non-standard format i am writing here otherwise you can write it in the same way 1 minus c a square but there will be a minus sign outside in that case okay. 
So it's specifically you should write a greater than zero and e greater than one if you are expressing like this. Okay. Thereafter, we have We break this term e square minus one into two terms here: a square root, a square root, and the denominator we write sine theta, and the numerator also we write sine theta. Okay. If we write it in this way, so this can be expressed as this can be expressed as e square minus one sine theta, and this part, if you remember, this is nothing but sine hyperbolic f as derived in the Lecture as derived earlier. We do one substitution here, as we have done earlier also. So e times one minus tan square theta by two, one plus tan square theta by two, and then we need to rearrange it. So for Now, tan square theta by two. If you remember, I have written the equation. I will also prove it here because this is required. But uh, let us use that information, whatever we have written earlier. So this is the information I have used earlier, and this I will prove here F by two. E minus one. Tan hyperbolic square f by two. Okay, this can be rearranged, and if we rearrange it, r equal to a times c a square minus one divided by one plus This part needs to be rearranged, and if we rearrange it, this can be simplified. This can be simplified to first simplify this part. Cos hyperbolic square f by two minus e plus one. Sine hyperbolic square f by two. The denominator will cancel out from the numerator. Here, this part will cancel out. So I am skipping one step and writing here. And we need to rearrange this term again. E times 
e is one outside and inside also so this is e times cos hyperbolic square f by 2 minus sin hyperbolic square f by 2 and the other term comes with uh, here only cos hyperbolic so this is cos hyperbolic square f divided by 2 minus sin hyperbolic square f by 2 and in the denominator we have the same way e cos hyperbolic square f by 2 plus sin hyperbolic square f by 2 and then plus or uh, we can write even in terms of minus here minus cos hyperbolic square f by 2 and uh, minus sin hyperbolic square f by 2 yeah, this is minus and uh, cos hyperbolic minus sin it arises here so this becomes plus it should come with a plus sign So, going to the next step, okay. so r becomes a times e a square minus 1 and then 1 plus e times this term needs to be simplified. You can see that this particular term here this equal to 1 cos f square hyperbolic f minus sin f square hyperbolic f. So, this we write as 1. So, that becomes e the first term becomes e. So, here you have e and thereafter this particular term is there cos hyperbolic f by 2 plus sin hyperbolic f by 2. So, this term we need to work out. here also we have this particular term and this term equal to 1. Okay. So, this term is the right hand side is 1 and we need to work out. So, we will show that this is cos hyperbolic f and here cos hyperbolic f multiplied by e. So, we have here uh, the last term we have written cos hyperbolic square f sin hyperbolic square f by 2. Okay, so, this term we have to rewrite it. So, we know that uh, cos hyperbolic square f minus sin hyperbolic square f this equal to 1 or sin hyperbolic square f this will be cos hyperbolic square f minus 1. Okay, so, we can utilize this information here in this place. So, this term then becomes cos hyperbolic square f by 2 plus cos hyperbolic square f by 2 minus 1. So, that means this is 2 cos hyperbolic square f by 2 minus 1 which is nothing but cos
cos hyperbolic f and which we have used here in this place. So, this term we are replacing by cos hyperbolic f. So, on the previous page this is your quantity cos hyperbolic f, this is cos hyperbolic f, but here with this E is multiplied and therefore, we have in this format and this is a minus sign here in this place. Okay. Once we have done this, rest of the steps it is not much difficult to work out. this this cancels out and we get here a times e a square minus 1 e cos hyperbolic f minus 1 divided by e a square minus 1 and then this term and this term will cancel out leaving us r equal to a times e cos hyperbolic f minus 1. Okay. So, you can notice the difference that uh, earlier we have got here the expression a times 1 minus e cos hyperbolic f for r, but there then a was taken as less than 0, here a is greater than 0, this is the difference because the this is the way we have expressed here, the here a is greater than 0 and therefore, in this expression a is greater than 0 and once we have proved our uh, for this uh, Kepler's equation for hyperbola. So, at that time you remember that I have taken r equal to this. Okay. So, you can this difference always you should notice because the different authors they will express in their own way and I have presented here both the ways it can be done. Okay. So, this is the expression for uh, r. Now, uh, only thing we are left with uh, proving this tan theta by 2 equal to e plus 1 e minus 1 under root tan hyperbolic f by 2 and this is uh, similar to what we have got for the ellipse. In that case, here instead of f, it was replaced by e. So, this particular part will work out and uh, before winding up the things. Then, uh, what we will do, we will stop here and continue in the next lecture. Thank you very much.